team currently tied 1-1. Alex, did you have to attend to another medical emergency there? Uh, I wouldn't call it an emergency. I've, you know, we've already had a handful of them this morning. It's exactly what I said yesterday. A lot of pulled muscles, a lot of just kind of strained joints. It's people that are worn out from yesterday. And, uh, they're, you know, today's, some of them are trying to play even harder than they did yesterday. So they're just working their bodies too hard. Too much physical exertion, but that's exactly what you expect as 16 teams vie for the national championship here on day two. And that's a big loss there as Ohio State loses number 34, Stringer, right off the bat. So the advantage is he will, the advantage is he will be next, you know, one of the first ones up in the event of a catch. So he's got that going for him. Well, what I've noticed, Ohio State was pretty fired up to get him back today. Oh, and go. he gets right back in. But he has been out a lot at the beginning of points. So I wonder if uh, maybe he's just a little bit rusty from not having played yesterday like some of these guys. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Uh, a lot of pressure you know, because I think the team knows it as well, that he's one of their power players. So it puts a lot of pressure on him. Uh, and we've seen him making, I mean, here he goes again, right up to the front, big, powerful throw, but looks like he's spiked, it a little bit. spiked it a little bit. I'm sure he's tired, everybody is. So as a former coach, Jazzy, what, what, what strategy do you think each of these two teams are gonna go for? What's Townsend gonna do? What's OSU gonna do here? Well, I think uh, Towson capitalized on a lot of energy, a lot of, uh, you know, enthusiasm, a lot of adrenaline and point number one. So you can't really bottle that and, uh, you know, pull it out each point. But at the same time, I think they lost a little bit of that cohesiveness that we saw in point number one uh, during point two. And that's what allowed Ohio State to slowly kind of pick them off and work down that man advantage that they had. So I think you have to get back to what you did in the first point, which was working together, communicating, being a flawless unit uh, as you attack this Ohio State Buckeye team. All right, one kill each there. Number, I believe it was number six for Ohio State going out, and number seven, Topedo, I believe, going out. The torpedo. The torpedo going out. Yeah, Stringer going out again for uh, OSU. He's spending more time on the sidelines than he is on the court today. And, I mean, uh, you saw it there, and I don't know if it was, you know, he was upset with himself or just a little bit exhausted, but after he got hit, he was kind of down on a knee for a second, took a couple of big breaths, then got up and walked off. And even now, he's kind of tripoded over, leaning on his knees. I think he's tired. He looks very, very tired to me, and he's playing like he's tired too. Which is funny because this is his first day. This is his first game this weekend. So you figured he'd be fresh, but you wonder if the energy is just kind of overwhelming him a little bit right now. It's that long drive down from Ohio. I guess. But the Buckeyes really depending on him today is that fresh arm. You know, sometimes on day two, one fresh arm will make the world of difference. Yeah, and of course, now you say that, I actually got to stop by and talk to one of the Ohio State players this morning, telling them, you know, I was really looking forward to their game. Um, and they had even mentioned, like, oh, you know, it's good. We've got, a, we've got one of our big guns coming in today. So... That is that Stringer, I suppose. I was unaware that he wasn't here yesterday. I wasn't able to watch any of Ohio State's games. Yeah, it's 93, uh, Vince Brickwig going out there for Ohio State. All right, cross-court catch brings number 54 back Nick on. Nick Boss Knight, number 30, Ohio State there with the catch. All right, and bring in Josh Levine back onto the court for Ohio State. Wow, big throw taken 007 out of the game. It said creep, I believe, on his jersey. <laughs> I didn't know 007 was a legal number, but by God, he's got it. I saw one of the player, one of the teams had a player with 9.81. That was his player number. That was VCU, yeah. I'm typing that one in for the program. <laughs> Let me try to get a count here. It's kind of difficult because people can be hiding under us. One, two. I count 10 in. Oh, take that back. That would make it nine in, I believe, yeah, for, Ohio for Ohio State. And that brings Mr. Clean, a.k.a. the bald eagle, back onto the court. You gotta love that he has a sense of humor. Back there. Looks like 11 in for uh, Townsend. 
Oh, wow. He's at number 25. 30, number 35 for Townsend. 25 Brown going out for Ohio State there. Wow, and another big catch. So this is looking good now. They, they're doing what they did in the first point, which is working as a unit. Sean Smith just insisting on throwing. I'm sure that muscle in his arm just feels like absolute crap right now. Yeah, I'm a little worried about him. Uh, the, I mean, the good thing is here, and it's a good. It's, I'm glad that the uh, game's organized the way they are. During downtime, these teams, especially these teams that are having some muscle issues, they've got to sit down, they've got to get hydrated. I've been telling all of them if there's some way if they've got to get some stretching done. Uh, and that's what I'm really worried about is some of these teams that rely on a handful of big guns, if you lose one or two of those, you know, that's all of your hopes for the tournament, you know, possibly going out with them. It's like a catch there for OSU. Yeah, brings back in number seven. Uh, just a minute ago, uh, Levine went out there for Ohio State, I believe. Number 54 on an attempted catch. All right, Team Canada, number two, getting in there. TJ telling his team what he wants them to do. And look, they're listening. They're going for it. Oh. oh an attempted catch there by John Shaw takes out the Towson leader. Got some vocal instructions for his team as he leaves the court. Shaw, a few words for his team while he's on his way off the court. All right, Alex being called off to another EMT. I wouldn't say emergency, but we have a player in need of some EMT services, so Alex is on his way to take care of that. Looks like we have about, trying to get a count here for us, the basketball goal is blocking 18, 18 left in this second half. Looks like Ohio State has been whittled down to six players left for the Buckeyes. Mr. Clean with a nice block there. And a great catch there by Jeff Starr, number 13. But he's immediately caught by number eight for Towson, Josh Grimm. Brings back in number 15, Mike Henley. And a hit to the knee there by number four, Josh Connor, one of the leaders for the Buckeyes, takes out a Towson player with no numbers. So we don't know who that is. Towson pushing back up, far side. Throw does not kill any Ohio State players. The torpedo up, bump faking. To give you an update, on the far court, we have uh, Kent State versus UWP. UWP actually up 2-0 right now on the Golden Flashes as that blo uh, drop blocking ball eliminates number 19, Sean Smith for Towson. And number 35 for Towson, Jonathan Sauer goes down there on a hit to the foot from Josh Connor, number four. A great jump in there by Mike Henley protects number seven, Josh Tope, the torpedo there. Wow, some nice blocking there by Winterbottom, number seven. Or Winterbottom, I'm sure. Oh, and number six for Ohio State goes down there on an attempt to catch. Ben, what does Towson have to do to finish off this point against Ohio State? I don't know. I'm trying not to. I'm trying to ignore the pain in my arm from holding this thing up all the way out in the middle of the court. Does this not hurt your arm doing this? You're laughing at me. Does it not hurt your arm holding this thing? A up? little bit, yes. <laughs> but that's why I train all year to be able to hold the camera for the broadcasting team at nationals. That is a sad reality, I'm sure. Oh, and a nice shot there. It takes out number 11 for Ohio State. Number 11, Behan. Behan. And the torpedo just missing on a shot at number 44, O'Connor for Ohio State. Ohio State down to four players now. That hit the ground, it looks like, so they're probably going to call that a trap, even though it did wedge between his knees. Well, Ohio State really wanted a catch there, but that's just not what it was. That's a trap. You can hear 
Everett skirting along the ground as it went into his knees. Number 21, Kenneth Daniels, and number seven, Josh Tote pushing up far side. Number 25, Peters brings back in Stringer. Oh. And number 21, Kenneth Daniels going down there for Towson. So a nice swing in favor of the Buckeyes. Some nice team blocking there. Ohio State still at four players. It looks like Towson is down to six. So they, no, I'm sorry, five. Nope, six. Couldn't tell if that guy on the back line was in, but they are still on six players. So they're still on the 15 count. Ohio State down to the 10 count now. And Stringer just barely resetting that shot clock there for Ohio State. Again, the ball has to cross the neutral zone line and be within a step and a dive of a player on the opposing team to count as a resetting of the shot clock. Thirteen and a half minutes left in this second half. So you have to figure this is a crucial, crucial point for both teams. With the time that it takes to score points in today's NCDA, you need probably at least eight to ten minutes to score a point. So as this point winds down, the winner of this point will likely win the game. And Stringer going down there, number 34 for Ohio State. Towson is still seemingly in control here as they still have, uh, looks like, six players left into Ohio State's three. The t group throw there from uh, Mike Henley and Josh Tope does not kill number seven, Winterbotham. Ohio State looks like has only two balls on their side, so man advantage and ball advantage to Towson right now as we have a timeout. And a break for my arm. There you go. Rest those arms, Ben. How are they feeling? Uh, it's all right. What I'm trying to do is uh, if, you, if you just watch the iPad, that's what you got to do because if you were looking at the action, you want to see exactly what the iPad's seeing. So you, I made the mistake yesterday of, of watching the game Outside of the iPad, and sometimes it would just kind of, yeah, it would, yeah, you point on the ground. So I'm just watching from there. I'm trying to keep everything in frame. It's very difficult considering it's just the, the frame reference. You can only get half of the court it is at any given picture, time. It seems like then the, the court, the camera, yeah. then the court itself. And I just what knocked your water over. That's no, all right. It's got a top on it. It's got top. Mr. Heigelbeck, welcome back. What kind of emergency did we have this time? I'm about to have a heart attack. So many stairs. Somebody get the EMT for the EMT. <laughs> uh, no, this is actually our first crowd injury. Had just uh, someone in the sidelines got hit pretty hard in the face, bloody nose, a little lightheaded. And also, will be all right. Yep, just fine. What what uh, what team were they a fan of? I believe she was the Saginaw Valley. She's sitting over on their bench. So. Showing the nowhere is safe. Nowhere is safe in college. Dogs. It really isn't. It's this not is a spectator sport. Yeah, maybe except for like uh, bullfighting. This is the most dangerous spectator sport in the world. Is Slinger or er, Slinger? Stringer. Stringer. Jesus. Stringer is out, yes. Okay. So Ohio State's down in to three, Ohio. yeah. So six in. So double the players for Townsend, but that means nothing in a game where a catch is a two player swing. Nice blocking by Townsend. All right, so at this point, what do we got? Uh, 12 minutes left, I believe. What do you do if you're OSU? You've got to try to win this point with the, how long it takes to score points in the modern NCDA. I was just saying, you have to figure it takes eight to ten minutes to score a point. So you can't risk it. I think if you're Ohio State, you've got to bleed this out, get some catches, try to swing this back in your favor. You cannot give up this point. The winner of this point probably wins this game. Okay. Looks like Townsend's got a couple of their big throwers in over there. Number seven, 
number 15 maybe. Uh, they still got Team Canada in, so we know there's some leadership on the court. But uh, Team Canada and number eight, I'm not sure of his name either, not super strong arms for those two. So it's, it, at the moment, if it comes down to throws, it goes up to seven and 15 for Townsend. Yeah, the Torpedo and uh, number 15, Mike Henley. While I was over at the, uh, just to check in, while I was over at the Saginaw Valley Penn State game, I believe Saginaw Valley pretty handily won that uh, the last couple of minutes. They're just kind of doing a fun game, mixing things up. So Saginaw had, oh, wow, big catch for Townsend there. But unfortunately, another player out. But they can afford that swing, leaving only two players in, number 44, O'Connor, and number seven, Winterbotham. Winterbotham. That's awesome. That was uh, number 31, Chris Thomas, that went out for Townsend there. See what kind of throws we get from number seven. But that does bring back in John Shaw. Yes, and I believe we have a timeout, Ohio State. And I believe that timeout was called with 10.08 left. 10.08 left in the second half. What do you think he's talking about down there? I mean, this is obviously for, what, O'Connor's the last one, right? Yes. What are, what are they telling him down there? I think they're saying, don't do anything stupid. Try your best to get a catch. Don't I mean, worry about kills. Reset the shot clock. Get a catch. Get somebody else back in. That's really your only hope. You're not going to eliminate well, like five or six thousand players by yourself. Get a catch. This is what Ohio State is known for. For almost a decade now, they've been the catching team in the NCDA. So Yeah, against six of the Townsend players, you know they're not going to throw alone, so they're going to do is, that would, they're going to throw three at a time. I think O'Connor is probably, maybe the best bet is to just boy, I don't know. You can't give up this point. Yeah. You've got to try to win this point, so yeah. even if you go for the catch, catch one, get hit by another, bring somebody else back in, you've got to try for the catch. Oh, no, that's game over, but that's point. Wait, what? So, 